But first, before we get to my descriptions and animations of how this wheel works, an interesting fact for you. I have been kindly informed by a retired Otis engineer, Pete Lomas, about why the Schindler motors have the hand winding wheel permanently attached. Its heavy design helps maintain the inertia of the motor when it's spinning and makes the transition between other speeds smoother. It's like this, open up your Lego box and build a car. The Lego car wheel takes little effort to spin and can be stopped in an instant, making movements much more abrupt. So the Schindler's hand winding wheel makes the motor spinning heavier, so that the motor spins up and down smoother than in other lifts. In the middle of the wheel is a floor position indicator. This is a ring of stationary terminals and a connector on the back which moves around with the wheel. When the connector touches the terminal, this will light up the corresponding floor indicator bulb. You can probably see that there are several terminals joined together, creating a long terminal. This keeps the corresponding floor bulb on for longer. So these terminals could be for the third floor. The next terminal is not connected, creating a gap. Then more contacts are linked to form the fourth floor position, then a gap. Each gap means that no floor bulb is lit. Sometimes there isn't a gap, so the floor position bulbs will not switch off. Here, one bulb is followed immediately by the next, without an off period. This is probably because the pins cannot be divided exactly between each floor. It might have worked out something like 2.8 connectors per floor, which created an anomaly in the spacing. Let's watch my simulation in action compared with the real indicator panel inside the lift. Around the sides of the wheel are roller switches that represent the floor positions. On the wheel itself, around the edge are ramps. The middle ramp represents the lift car position. This pushes all the roller switches on the way around. If it pushes a roller with an active call on that floor, this initiates a slowdown and stopping sequence. For me, this next bit is even more interesting. The inside roller switches. During my experience of studying each manufacturer's relay cabinets and mechanical lift position systems, I've realized that each lift must have some directional awareness. I've understood the Express and Otis systems, and I've explained how the Otis directional system works during my epic video. It's done from the carriage at the back of the floor selector. Click the link or see the description to check it out. This Schindler selector system uses the inside switches to find the direction of a call. A track in the middle of the wheel pings each roller switch up or down, depending on which way the wheel is turning. The roller switches hold their position mechanically. Now to the Mr. Matt and Mr. Che diagram, which took me ages by the way. The lift is at the ground floor. A call is placed on the top floor. The lift starts up the shaft to find it. The roller switches have two positions. Each switch is moved mechanically as the wheel goes round. The upper position directs voltage towards the red I must go up wiring. Whereas the lower positions direct voltage towards the green I must go down wiring. Let's say the lift is on the second floor and a call comes in on the first floor. This is relay logic. There is no programming involved like car is below lift car, now go down. Each command must be represented mechanically. 
So this example, the active cord allows power into the roller switch. This roller switch is down, which directs the power into the green wire structure resulting in a down motor command. Any other lower cords do exactly the same. If a call came in above the lift, look at the switch positions. Power for this floor is now directed towards the red cabling, resulting in an up motor direction. But what if two calls came in at the same time? We need to have more mechanics, which can only mean one thing, more relays. We have to force the system to work in one direction and ignore the calls in the opposite direction. Here you go, this should do it. Let's add a directional relay. This can be either on or off. Here, off represents up and on represents down. When the relay is on, the calls above the lift are disconnected and ignored. When the lift reaches its last call in the downwards direction, the directional relay can now reverse. Now the lift is going up. This now ignores any calls below the lift as it disconnects the green wiring structure and responds to calls above the lift only. Well, you are looking at a very simple diagram here, but in reality, there's plenty more relays involved.